Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here. Today I'm going over part one of the Dark Phoenix character review. She is coming out tomorrow to Global, so today we're going to go over her stats and everything that we know ahead of time fairly reliably. So part one today is going to be the character overview, the base stat analysis, her total stats, a little bit about her damage potential based off those stats, and then going over the report card for her. Now for parts two and three, which I'll have in the next coming days once she's released, I can max her, I can use her in a variety of different situations to really get to know her better. Part two is going to be the class and job analysis where we look at all the abilities much closer and individually, a little bit about her AI and auto prioritization so you know what uh, toggles to have on or off, the TMR review, looking at exactly where her TMR strengths and weaknesses are, my general thoughts as well, kind of encapsulating everything we know about her based upon the stats and the in-game uh, testing. And then finally, part three will be more of a deep dive there where you really get to master the character. We're going to do some math about the cast time because she's a caster, so there is some noteworthy things there in terms of how quickly she can use her abilities. A little bit about the Esper synergies, weapon optimization, vision card analysis, and then the trust on recommendation. So all of that nice nitty gritty things that takes your Dark Fina from this level all the way up to this level. So for now, let's get things kicked off from the stats perspective. The character overview, brand new Dark unit. They did give her the unique main job of Sorceress of Hess. She does have the Scholar and Devout sub jobs, which are very interesting from an ability and, and overall passives and stat perspective. She does equip rods and hats, cloth and accessories with a move of three and a jump of one. She is another 100 cost unit added to our dark cast. So we'll see if she lives up to the hype of some of the rest of them. So now from a resistance standpoint, only minus 10% to light, that's pretty standard. From a weapon resistance perspective though, really good ones here where when you consider the three most popular types of slash, missile and magic, she's double digit positive to all of them, 15% to slash and 10% to the other two. She is neutral to strike damage and the only negative resistance is the 10% to pierce. So although obviously it's something you want to look out for, overall she starts off at a pretty good spot. From a resistance status ailment perspective, she is a 97 faith unit, so the, these are things that you want to look out for. She does have 50% resistance to both charm and slow, and 10% to blind, which all of those are more uh, recent additions in terms of meta implications for status ailments, so it's nice that she gets those. Kind of surprisingly though, a lot of times when characters come out, they get ailment resistances to their own status status afflictions so she is a character known to do a lot of stop related to abilities and it's kind of surprising she does not have any resistance to stop so for the mirror matchup that has some interesting implications when you see another dark fina but jumping into the base stats of things now so of uh, hp perspective again this is including all ur characters in the game whenever i do my reviews it's only looking at ur characters fortunately or unfortunately, but she is kind of in the middle, little on the lower side of things. When you look at who her comparisons are here, there are some interesting characters in that it's some of the missile units, some of the supports, some of the squishier evasion units. So she does, from a base HP perspective, end up skewing on the lower side of things. So she will not scale as highly with uh, HP scaling things. That's not a real indication of her survivability though, as we're going to see soon. Uh, from a base magic perspective, drum roll please, we have a new leader on the board. She is the number one magic stat unit out of all the URs in the game at 420. It's quite impressive how high her magic stat is. So what that means is any magic scaling things you put on her, percentage increases are going to massively scale off of this stat upwards, which is why I have that whole little damage uh, section in here to kind of look at what that might look like at first glance. Now, from an agility standpoint, this is the trade-off. She does skew a little bit on the lower side for base agility, so ends up at 54. There are some other ways to increase it, though. She does have some good agility on her board. She's got a passive to increase it, so all is not lost, but base agility-wise, definitely lower. She's not going to get as much from those percentage scaling things, which is fine. That's kind of the trade-off for higher damage output. This means you probably get less turn orders and ends up working out the same, but I would imagine it's kind of the offset to her power. And from a dexterity standpoint, a little bit lower than the average, but not concerningly so. She's still right around that middle area. This still does good things for her overall accuracy. Just not really known for a lot of her critical hits, which is fine. Her kit doesn't really require it. So not a ton on the way of critical hit potential, but it's at least enough there that accuracy why she doesn't suffer terribly so. Now from a luck perspective, a little bit better here. She is kind of more in that mid-range of all the characters. This obviously affecting things like accuracy, evasion, and crit avoidance. Overall in a decent spot. 
Now we reconcile the base stats to her total stats. So uh, base stats, this radial chart, the way I have this set up is that uh, each line is basically 10%. And I have this skewed so that it shows where the character falls in the range of the maximum stat and the minimum stat. So in this instance, she's the highest base magic character in the game. So she ends up being the top unit there. So she's 100%. What the HP 34% means is basically she's 34% of the way between the lowest unit and the highest unit. And again, this doesn't take into account any differentiations between class. So tanks and supports are included in this. So, you know, you have Engelbert as the leader here in HP. So obviously it's going to be skewed downward from that perspective. But overall, when you look at her strengths from a base uh, stats perspective, magic is really the only one where she really shines. The rest of them are fair, if not on the lower side of things, obviously meant to kind of counteract the strength of that. But when you get to the total stats, they actually do some things with her board and her uh, nodes to actually increase her relative standing. So her magic is obviously still top of the charts. The agility does actually end up being a little bit better though because of the board agility that they end up giving her. And then she actually gets a little bit weaker comparatively HP wise, where a lot of characters have more HP scaling things. So she ends up falling behind just a smidge there, but overall relatively same profile. When you look at the actual total absolute numbers of the stats though, she ends up at 3,300 HP, 657 total magic. So not only does she have the incredibly high base magic, but she gets another 111 from the board. She has a 20% board node that gets her up to another 84. And then her mastery ability has another 10% magic, giving her another 42 for a grand whopping total of 657. For context, the next closest UR magic stat in global is Classy Glassy at 621. So she is a head and shoulder higher than the second highest UR unit. And that's staggeringly high, uh, considering that if you look at the index of highest magic units, uh, most of them tend to be support oriented characters where they use that high magic to help how much the healing they do and to have a little more impactful damage on those rare times that they do damaging abilities. So the fact that she's not only heads and tails above everyone, but even above the supports, that cannot be understated enough. Now, agility wise, she ends up at 62. Again, lower base agility, but that eight on the board is a little bit higher than what we see nowadays for what they give characters. Dexterity ends up at 243 and luck ends up at 250. Nothing too crazy there overall. Now we look at the damage potential. This is where I want to dive in a little more in terms of what you have for types of penetration, what kind of stat you can expect to see. So she does have 20% magic resistance penetration always as part of the mastery. And there's a few other ways to bump that up. One of them is her TMR, which gives her 40% more magic resistance penetration. Another one is the Cypress Pile Rod, which is 20%. And theoretically, you have the Trust Stone Passive, which can also give you 10%. Now, from a Spear Penetration perspective, her best passive you'll have on all the time is 40% Spear Penetration. You can get another 10 from her Vision Card. She has a buff that gives her 20. You can theoretically get another 20 from the Valgie's Rod, which is Renan's weapon. 10% from the Trust Stone Passive. This doesn't all stack between the Rod and the Passive, but these are just the ways in which you can get them. If I had to pick optimally which would I try to, to aim for, it would probably be, and I just bolded them slightly here, the Trust Stone Passive, 10% is probably enough. I don't know if you need the TMR, number one. And number two, I'd rather have a Rod that has magic modifier as opposed to some of the penetration so you would realistically have 30 percent magic resistance penetration on at all times obviously could get up to the cypress pile pretty easily but i think 30 is enough and then from a spear penetration perspective i think between the vision card the buff and even just the trust stone passive here with her regular passive you're talking anywhere from 60 to 80 percent spear penetration at all times that's insane that's an immense amount of spear penetration obviously you could even go higher depending upon how much you want a magic tank bust but she really does need to get there because there's something very interesting in her kit that bypasses the best magic tank in the game. That's coming in part two, obviously. Now, in terms of stress testing some of the stats, I gave her this sample build. I did throw in the Cypress pile here just for the heck of it. It doesn't have to be. It could be really any rod. I was really trying to get an approximation of magic stat. I did put on the support skills. I tweaked the statues and the element mastery, threw in some vision cards and some other two units in the party. And effectively, what I got her here without really trying to, again, max, like min-max the magic stat, really just going for an average sample build here, uh, was getting her up to nearly 1,700 magic. Uh, I used agility trust stones here, and I gave them a 20% magic passive, but theoretically, if you use magic trust stones for the set bonus, this would be even higher, and obviously doesn't include any kind of buffs to magic as well. But 1,700 magic on a DPS is a, like a, that is a staggering high. I'm almost at a loss for words of how high impact that really is. 
and when you include the dark modifiers you can get close to a hundred so all of her abilities can get some pretty significant increases in total damage modifiers as well when you combine that with the amount of penetration there is boy are people in for a difficult time so now we get into the report card overall so effective hp if you recall she did have a lower base hp overall but she's got so many things that actually make her effective hp much better she's a b plus for overall effective hp b against physical a minus against the magical because she does skew a little bit more on the spirit heavy side of things but she is a unit that has re-raise number one she also has 40 aoe resistance when her hp is above 70 percent her vision card can give her another 10 so you're talking 50 aoe resistance as long as that hp is above that threshold she does have six defense and two spirit innately no matter what she does have a main passive which you're gonna have on most of the time that gives her 24 spirit are you kidding me on a damage dealer and a buff that gives another 20 without even an equipment or anything be at 46 spirit just walking around the battlefield uh suggested second passive of mine gives her 12 defense as well so you're talking 18 total defense without any espers equipments or anything whatsoever so crazy amounts of effective hp not only from the resistance that we saw those double digit strengths but also from the defense the spirit and the aoe resistance here as well in addition to the re-raise my god is she a tanky overall mage despite the fact that her base hp is on the lower side of things now from the primary stat perspective i ha i don't usually go s i gotta give an s i don't i'm not a fan of using that designation but crazy high magic i can't imagine another magic dealer coming out with nearly that a uh, high amount of a stat with tons of magic and spirit penetration as we saw that the offensive output but here based off the primary stat is off the charts nuts plain and simple now from an agility perspective ends up at that c plus again lower on the side of base agility but she does have that eight from the board she's got a passive that gives her 12 percent. so when you include all passives she ends up at 68 versus the average of 66 so ends up being in a relatively good spot again when you start adding the 15 percent agility vision card she won't scale as much from them so you're kind of limited to the ceiling of where you can get her toward but overall not in the worst spot from an accuracy perspective giving her a b uh seven percent more accurate than the average 16 percent when you include the passives if we look at this just kind of in a, a list form here uh sorted from highest to lowest on the accuracy with passives she is probably one of the top 20 most accurate characters in the game she has one that increases her accuracy by 20 percent and her luck and dexterity are good enough that she doesn't need a ton of help with that passive but graphically speaking you can tend she, she's definitely on the upper echelon of things here when you give her some kind of accuracy boosting equipment she'll have absolutely no problem hitting high tier evade units which is frankly kind of scary giving her damage output a couple other characters like that where it's just not all the time but c tier means there's still potential there if you max for it it's just the only way you're going to evade anything if, is if the enemy just doesn't care and is not gearing for accuracy so it's definitely not reliable definitely not considered an evade unit but it, theoretically if you're stress testing them they do have opportunities to dodge and she falls into that so if you're looking at you know total evasion when you're, you're looking at 35 percent luck vision card 17 percent luck subvision card the luck set bonus the luck passive she ends up at this 100 percent which is like the again the bottom tier of what you'd expect from the evade potential whatsoever you can see graphically speaking she's just like right there on the cusp before you start seeing that you know fall off of evasion rates it's there not reliable but when you consider you're going to be putting her with joker and dark leela most often or venera or whoever you might using for your dark cast they do have a lot of luck amplifying uh builds so sh considering you're going to be building evasion for a lot of them anyway she certainly will benefit now, from a movement perspective, uh, giving her C, totally average, totally fine. Nothing to increase move or jump in her kit. She doesn't need it. That's okay. From a passive perspective, though, giving her an A. She actually has really versatile passives for uh, various metas and strats. There is one in particular that I think you'll have on 100% of the time. But the other ones, there's a time and place for when you can optimize, which is a good thing for the character. Now, from a counter perspective, giving her a B plus. Uh, overall, they're limited for what she has for counters. They're overall not that great. But there's one in particular that just works so well for how you build our new and improved dark meta as we know it in 2022. Uh, really good counter for her overall. Now, the overall kit giving her an a and that's the whole point of part two i'm going to go in and go through all the abilities how the prioritization of abilities works what it means statistically so stay tuned for that but the final grade i'm giving her is an a she is a stellar character if anyone's asking is she a must pull hard to say no she is a definite yes when it comes to high-end impact in this game particularly considering the improvements we've seen to dark recently with dark leela the anima vision card her new vision card that's coming out as well 
there's a lot of balanced things that are really catered to her performing exceptionally well at the top end and bottom ends of the game. Very excited to go through parts two and three. Very excited to build her tomorrow upon release. Good luck pulling for her. If that's a character you have the resources for, I promise you, you're even if not min-maxing, you're still going to get a ton of value out of her. She is just that good. So for the meantime, thanks for watching, everybody. Comments, questions, critiques, always welcome in the comment section below. Happy to interact with you all, and I will see you all soon.